You know, my friends, each year on this most holy day, you know, there, there's a part of me, there's a part of me that feels I should just keep my mouth shut now and go directly to my chair. And probably some of you feel exactly the same way. Partly because of the length of this gospel, but mostly, mostly I would guess, is because of the story itself. It, it's power to move us the variety of emotions it brings up in each of us. This is an exceptionally good reason why we call it the greatest story ever told. And so silence might be the very best way to go. But if I was going to do that, I probably would have gone back to my chair already without saying a word. But because this story really is so rich, so powerful, it might just be helpful to suggest a kind of starting point as we enter this holiest of all weeks. The pattern of this week that we call the Paschal Mystery is not just the plot of the story of Jesus. It is actually the story of every single one of us, of our lives, shaping and transforming all that we do and all who we are. And yet because of what we believe in faith, and because of the hope we place in God and the promises of God, perhaps we would prefer to go to the end of the story, to the good stuff, to the joyous fulfillment of the deepest longings of our hearts. But this week shows us otherwise. It reveals that loving, loving costs something. That doing right by others costs something. That following God's plan for our life costs something. Yet the cost of living a faithful life, the cost of discipleship, the cost of laying down one's life for others is infinitely offset by the incredible power unleashed on the world whenever we choose to love as Jesus loved and loves. You see, my friends, Jesus did nothing but love. And he saved the world. You know, what if we tried to love? What if we tried to love every person in every single situation? That's what it means to walk up that lonely hill of Calvary with him. Not begrudgingly, but willingly. Not full of hate, but bursting with compassion, mercy, forgiveness, generosity, and every other good thing our loving God showers down upon every one of us. Living a faithful life is difficult. This week shows us that in a very concrete way. But it also shows the life-changing and world-changing power of loving in the very same way that Jesus loves. So my prayer for you, for me, for all of us, is that each of us may approach not only this week, but every cross that comes into our own lives with the kind of love perfectly revealed through Jesus' self-sacrificing act. This is what authentic faith looks like. You know, to put it quite simply, our individual struggles and heartaches, and tragedies, and sin, and even death itself, is ultimately powerless in the face of great love. Goodness wins. Love wins. God wins. Every time. And so as we journey with Jesus this Holy Week, may we come to fully recognize just how seriously and how solemnly God wants each of us to follow the example of Jesus, to follow him up the hill of Calvary, trusting that when we choose to love unconditionally, without reservation, incredible things can happen and will happen for us, for others, and for the world. So my friends, let's allow this week to interweave with each of our individual lives, with the greatest story ever told. They should fit together perfectly. 
After all, the pattern, the pattern of every human life is a mystery, a profound truth that we encounter, embrace, and stand in awe of during this Holy Week. <laughs>